Hello there, Chris here. We've been making an effort to make our workshop presentable. So, as a bit of fun, we thought we'd do a guided tour of our workshop. Terry, you there? Evening. Hello there. <laughs> right. Over to you. Well, good evening. Yeah. Hope you're all very well. And uh, it's been one of those days, as usual, it seems to be. Mm -hmm. And as usual, I'm sitting in this illustrious little office the oval room no, the square room really isn't it and um also, lumbered with paperwork yes and i said to chris a few days ago um i don't know what it was after i had this ticker up in 2014 but after i came out i have never ever been so overwhelmed with paper in my life admin nonsense trying to get VAT money back from a new system that customs have put in for imports, for repairs. Oh, that's a bag of fun, that yeah, one. Yeah, we're still on it, and they still haven't credited me with the money. It seems to have gone to the shippers who booked it in in the first place and not come back on here. Anyway, never mind. So, um, yeah, this, this is the little office where most people hear from me, I suppose, uh, when we're chattering on the phone. I'm talking for England, I suppose. Yeah. So, you want to have a look round then? Yeah, if you'd like to give us a tour and show customers where the magic happens. <laughs> I cringe whenever I say that, but I think it's a bit of fun. Right, well, down here, on the pictures that we, we put up the other day, um, we had three machines being tested. Well, they're now in the boxes, yep. um, waiting for three patient customers waiting for those. Um, probably send them out Monday now so I don't like sending out on Fridays in case things get held up in warehouses and what have you obviously there's a photocopy of there and, and in the corner we've got a painting of uh, oh of course yes yes yeah. yes yes oh yes yes Cindy the German management yeah we used to take the picture that pictures been to Munich Frankfurt many many times Cindy poor, poor dog died in 2010 but uh, um, yeah, we used to take the picture of Cindy and we used to put her on the wall, especially at Frankfurt, and the German enthusiasts used to come in and uh, used to stand in front of her and say, hello Cindy, how are you? <laughs> and uh, there was one occasion where we went to the general office and um, I think night started, I went up to Renata and I said, is there any chance of a, of a pass for Cindy? Yeah, go and get your picture. So yeah. I went and got the picture and uh, there were all the people going into the reception area at the show, standing there getting their pictures taken, everybody standing there all military looking, you know. And there's me with a picture frame. And there's Renata saying, back a bit, left a bit, to the right, this way, that way, right, got it. And uh, a, print, a label was printed. I said, um, there's a picture of the dog's head. And... <laughs> said to Renata, what are we going to call it? Now, I can't remember the German for this, but it was something like Stat Gruppenführer Gesalle Schaft. Or Übengruppenführer. Yeah, yeah. Said, the overseer. And she said, oh, that's the president of an international corporation. So, oh. so I used to wear the pet, this badge with the dog's head on at the show. And we used to walk through the security passes. I used to have my mine one on the back of my neck. And on the very, it used to just show the pass, yeah, go through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And on the last day, I went up to this guy, and it was actually the German scouts, I think. And I went up to a chap on the end, I said, um, You've seen this? Ah, this is not very good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we used to take the pictures of Cindy every year, and then that picture there with the rain is um, Bruno, who came in as the replacement. And I always remember saying to Martina, What's he called? And um, I said it was Bruno. She said, oh, this is a very common name for Germany. <laughs> so, but uh, no, I wanted, to call, I wanted to call him Rommel, but uh, it didn't happen anyway. Alas, Bruno, unfortunately, he had to get rehomed um, because he wasn't very good with other dogs. But anyway, that Good aside, with humans, mind you. Yeah. I like oh, Bruno. Yeah, I used to like him. Yeah. Anyway, well, let's go around here. We to digress as usual. Um, these like tangents are valuable, Terry. Don't apologise. No. Well, there's the famous central heating system. Yeah. And um, there's the order list for cleaners at the moment. And this is our the, testing bench. The bench is empty because they're in the boxes, and mm -hmm. tomorrow there'll be another five or six machines to most likely to, go to on test through. Yeah. 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 Here is where Steve does his assembly of the machines. Mm -hmm. The double-ended pumps for PRC fours, 
a couple of walnut cabinets there. B100 pump there for a PRC6. Nice and quiet. Mm, very quiet. Steve's brass little area where he assembles up the arm tubes. And he's, the assembling he's jig. He's got his jig there. And if I could just bring it back to the testing area again, Terry, just behind you, that blue box in the corner is an inverter. So oh, yes, yes, our famous inverter. The reason has. being is that way we can have a 60 hertz supply for uh, the 110 volt systems. That's right, and it's a pure sine wave inverter, mm. powered by, of course, ex Land Rover batteries. <laughs> Which is over there in the yeah, corner. Well, that one yeah. isn't, but the, the others are in the well, back. Yeah. Um, Do you want to show the showroom yeah, or yeah. the other assembly? Yeah, coming in this bit first. So here we have, where are we, where are we going to start? Well here we got, got here, um, an old garage display turntable which we had overhauled many years ago. That was an award from Image Hi-Fi for Turntable of the Year 2001 for the 501. Um, an old RC98 variable speed auto changer which, which was very popular in America. I bought that from, uh, from uh, Mr Griggs who worked at the factory and um, Terry, I've got to interrupt you here. You're going to have some people wondering why is there a photograph of a uh, is that a Rolls Royce Corniche? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, that was the longest delivery turntable I think of all time. It took about two and a half years to deliver it to the customer because a customer from Singapore ordered a standard 501, like this one down here. This is the prototype. That's the very first. Yeah, this is the very first one we built, and. Um, Still sounds great today, and um, somewhere through the negotiation, he rang one afternoon and said, "Look, could we make his 501 reminiscent of the Rolls Royce Corniche on the website?" Oh well, I had made contact with Rolls Royce and Bentley cars previously um, because I remember meeting. Um, one of Mr. Slade's daughters, and uh, she told me, one of Mr. Slade's son's daughters, and um, she told me how her father was very proud of the fact that uh, one day they could see the, an advertisement, and he'd got a Rolls Royce radiator on the front, and on the apron was a 301, and all the advert said was the finest of them all. Now we used that, we did use that on our sweatshirts for quite a while, and um, it turns out it was an advert for Rolls-Royce North America, but all it had was the, the two addresses of the two companies, you see. And uh, so I'd made contact with them about that at that time. So anyway, I got in touch with Bentley Motorcars. Um, I was put in touch in the, eventually into, with the product manager, told him what we were, what we did. And there was a connection because Garrard used to work with Vickers in the, during the Second World War and, and Vickers actually owned Rolls-Royce and Bentley. And um, that sort of cemented the relationship and uh, I was given the colour code because he wanted the colour, that colour for the motorboard. This is wine red actually, this is not sunset, this is what that is. And, um, and of course uh, they told me how they made the radiator and I did ask them if there was any chance we could pop our um, pop some stainless steel chassis down to them and they could accidentally drop them in the rhodium tank but uh, that fell on deaf ears that bit was a no show on that one yeah, yeah. yeah. but uh, no we that was the that was what ha hence the Garrard 501 inspiration inspired by that car and when I went to Las Vegas um, probably about 2001 2 um, I got in touch with with Bentley and asked them if there's any chance for a small picture of the car, just so I could just put it by the turntable, you know. And um, Douglas, the product manager, said, well, you won't believe this, but this will have to go to um, the board of directors of Volkswagen because uh, you're in the audio industry and we are negotiating with a very famous American brand at the moment for the entertainment systems in the car. Anyway, I don't know, X number of weeks later, over in the old workshop over there, this rather large box arrives, if we open it up, this is in there, and uh, there's a compliment slip from Bentley Motorcars to Terry, the best of luck in, in America, fly the flag for Great Britain, Bentley Motorcars, which I thought was very kind of them. I mean, that's a, that was a beautifully, I mean, that's a beautifully framed, beautiful frame, you know, mm. there's no, 
bit of old, this is no bit of vinyl veneer or anything like that, or vinyl plastic, whatever. So anyway, yeah, we took that to States, we had it in the room, and here we have, very convenient, the pictures here. There it is, on the wall in Las Vegas. Yep. There's Fraulein Shona, and there's Herr Trowbridge there, who does the website, did the website for me. Martina there, Steve, who was Condo's uh, agent. agent, and put the glasses Somewhere on. over here, be Mr. Flash Condo. Down down. There's Mr. Condo there. Yep, yeah. and there's Frank Schroeder there, there's Steve. Mike Hobson from Classic Records, Mr. Condo, poor man died a few years later. Rest in peace. I forgot his name, poor chap from Hungary, he died. He died very young age, that chap. There's me, Masaki there, Shona, and one of the helpers, and there's one of these guys there driving the little cart that they were taking the stuff around in. So anyway, we had the turntable a few years running at, um, at Vegas. First met Mr. Condo at the Hi-Fi show in, when they moved it to, from the Ramada to the Novotel in Hammersmith. I'll never ever forget arriving on the Land Rover. Went down in the basement. I thought, I can't believe this. They've got building works going on. And they're building workers with scaffolding planks on their shoulders and ladders everywhere. And we're trying to unload our cars. I thought, oh, what a nightmare. And I managed to talk to this Irish gentleman who's the foreman down there. He said, oh, I'm an O'Sullivan. My dad's a civil engineer. Oh, yeah, yeah. Who do you work for then? Oh, Costains and Tarmac. Oh, yeah, yeah. What are you doing, mate? Oh, I need to park my car. I said, I'm here for three, three days. I'll tell you what, mate, come here. And he found me a little gap, and every day I drove down there, and I parked between these two porter cabins. <laughs> and very conveniently, I walked out the back door, and where's the lift? About two foot away. You know? So, very useful. But what I, anyway, that's where we met Condo. And um, that was with PM Components, and we exhibited with Mr. Condo at the show, and that's really how we started with him. Anyway. Here we got the 601 and uh, going through that little Rotel at the moment. Oh yeah. I sometimes use the Rose preamp. But in this case we have the missing link yeah, phono the, stage. Yeah, your dad's wonderful missing link, which I want to get back into production if I can. Even if your dad can't do it, we've got to find a way of doing it. Um, obviously there's the power supply for the 601 there. And a very nice SME arm there That's too. right, little M2. Yeah. The uh, autofon red. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little moving magnet. Um, the Haybrooks have stopped Haybrooking, so they've got to go back to Guy Sargent to get fixed. I'm not sure if it's a crossover or tweeters and a pair of Dyn Audio speakers there that your dad supplied, which are very good. Absolutely lovely sounds. Yeah. That that is yeah. one of the perks of the job, by the way. Is yeah. once we do yeah, all the yeah. testing and cleaning. Yeah, let me put myself up um, here. Interesting picture here from the. Um, the Garrard, uh, the Swindon Historical Society, uh, where they mention in there on Swindon Corporation's website that um, with me, with Garrard, well, Garrard is back, and it's nearly back in Swindon, but it's in Lambourne, just up the road. Um, and anyway, they presented me with that at, at uh, an exhibition of um, the history of Swindon. And obviously they're all some of the brochures, which we've got loads of down there. Um, Customers 301 there. There's a 28mm plinth there. Again, we've got a 35mm 501 plinth here. This is. Forever moving things around. And in here, this is for our customer, Hong Kong. This is our distributor, Sam. This is his 301 in here, but under here, let's show you this one, it's easier. That's a, a customer's 301 waiting to be delivered to him. Got to be installed, in fact, in one of these plinths here that we just picked up today. Um, from our cabinet maker in Swindon. Well, the first one is in... Uh, a very heavy, very dense maple wood. Very, very heavy it is. And, uh, cherry there. And the cherry one. And an and oak that's in the a, distance. That's an oak in the distance. Yeah. And of course, there's some of the old um, publicity material, the, the 
The legend continues with the Garrard 301, which we produced these a long time ago. And that's where well, Paul Stewart did those for us when Paul was with us, and that was the, the 501. But again, the legend continues. We used that logo for a, a long, long time. And of course, there we've got the diamond logo, which I suppose we could pop up in the air. Yeah. And uh, let's move round. <coughs> the thread lids there. Come round here. Valves, some amps, TL12s. There's an RCA amp there, which your your uncle may have restored. Went, yeah, he went through them before he died. And there's the other half of the RCAs down there. Um, you can see the, the famous Lamborn dust on it, which is on the farm here as you gather. Uh, there's a 124 project we're doing there for a customer, which has got to be finished. Uh, Very nice plinth, similar to the other ones, but smaller yeah. to fit the dimensions yeah, yeah, of a yeah, TD124. Yeah, there, there it is there, yeah. It's got to go in. I hope they'll get that finished at the end of next week. Steve's at the corner here with the rumble meter that came out of the factory. And uh, I bought those from... Just before, from Garrard, just before the managing director closed down the research facility in Swindon, and um, he was very instrumental in helping me get the trademark. And uh, the little room, the famous kitchen with the important dog food or cat food, should I say? For yes. Our, for our stray cat, who will no doubt turn up in a little while, and we look after her. Mention her enough times and we hear the mewing. Yeah, yeah, she'll turn up in a minute. And then the garage workshop here, which um, has in the left a freer one in the testing rig. Yeah, the mats got to be dealt with. And but they've the been right fully floor. serviced and uh, they're waiting to go into plinths uh, for their customers. Mm. And, uh, and over there in the distance is a free door yeah. Lamb Rover. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, that old girl, 325,000 miles, never let us down once, not once. Uh, me and I travelled to Germany, Vienna, Bratislava in it, used to tow the trailer to all the high-end shows. And um, just, when, when was it? It's, it's three years it's been parked there, and I had a silly little accident in it, and... Uh, Somebody drove up the back of Lorraine's car, and I managed to drive up to the up the back of this fella. Um, it's not too bad, but we're going to get it out, and we're going to bring it back to life. And uh, I always remember Thomas Fast in uh, in Munich. We were loading up at the end of the show one year, and Thomas was on the hoist, and he was on the tailgate hoist. And he was going up and down, and we we persuaded Shankers to let us leave the trailer in the corner. So we could just load up quickly. And um, Thomas said to me, Ah, I see you have a wonderful German product made by BMW. And I said, No, oh, no, 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 Thomas. No, 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 no. This one was built by British Aerospace. And uh, we had a bit of banter. But no, it did well. And uh, yeah, I miss that old girl. And uh, we've, we've been up to Beatrice Garden with it and uh, travelled all over it. In, in all over Germany and up the Rhine and all over with it and uh, we'll get it going again. Speaking of getting it going, if I can show the customers here, mm. we have got rather a lot of 401 and 301 chassis. Well in the in the early days we stripped down a lot of 401s and put them through them when we remanufacturing process and they're the ones that are left. We've got the motors, we've got the linkage, We've got everything here, it's just a matter of getting on with it. They're down there, buried down there somewhere. In fact, I can see it from here, that 301 down there. I think it's this one. It's got a number on it. Yeah, sure, this is the one. Yeah, come on. Come out, you little beast. Come out. Hold on, let's just... Uh, let me just tidy this up. Right, okay, so we go back in. Yeah, that is one of them. Yeah, that is one of them. There's a second one as well. Well, we bought three of these from Cyprus. And uh, 
I gave fifty pounds each for them, and they arrived and and lined up on the wall over there and Paul came to visit us one day and uh, he said what you got there? I said well we've got 3301s I bought from Cyprus and they've got numbers on them that one that, not sure if that is the one were it? yes it is it is it's one of them. the other ones down there I mean is the serial number anyway, legible? anyway it turns out he said where would you get them from? I said oh they came from an old recording studio in, um, in Cyprus Oh, you silly fools. You know where they've come from, don't you? I said, no, I haven't got a clue. He said, they come from British Forces Radio. He said, do you realise that Cliff Mitchell Moore was on using those 301s and it was Gene Metcalf in London and it was two-way family favourites. And uh, again, one of these days, time permitting, well, some of the other, bring them back to life. That one, not particularly, because the chassis was broken on it. But... Uh, We've got plenty more chassis here. Um, we'll get it working again. Yep. Yeah. And uh, in the corner there, we've got the set of scales that came out of the research laboratory. And uh, one of our projects that we were doing, which never took off, which should have taken off and may take off again, there's this an old, I say an old, it's a, it's a, six, it's a 501 aluminium chassis um, which was mucked around with quite honestly and that project was going to be that um, a customer could donate his 401 and we'd put his motor and his bearing and his platter on and the idea was he could go on the upgrade path to get a 501 and then he could the next, he would go and park the path and then he would Get the motor and the power supply that motor would then go back into his 401 so he wouldn't destroy nothing was destroyed um, nothing was broken up um, but uh, it didn't come to any fruition probably down to me a bit well it's the idea of having an upgrade path so you start off with your 401 motor and get that going again um, be fun that out here um, hmm. there's a bmw product yeah there's uh, a Land Rover made by BMW, so that's uh, Mr. Fast got his way in the end. Yeah. <laughs> and then out there we do, we've got a bit of storage, we've got some woodworking machinery along there, and this is really the general... Um, Use for all the preparation of yeah, our record yeah, clean yeah, machines. Keep some of the boxes over there, the cabinets over there, and uh, storage upstairs, storage up there. So... Shall we wrap this up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do. Oh, it's one more thing. Um, I found this the other day, this right up here. And uh, it was an article in Audio Magazine, 1998 this was, when we took the 501 out for review. And um, I found this little article, this bit here, this is the translation and uh, it says, why is Terry O'Sullivan dedicated to himself to building a friction-driven turntable? Aren't belt-driven ones better? No, they're just cheaper to build. The producer of Lorrycraft Audio will start his explanations. Full stop. One, or maybe two hours later, you wish you'd never brought up the question. Possibly O'Sullivan will then be right in the middle of his story on how he got the material for the turntable for 501. His colleague of development, Nigel Pearson, your dad, who in the meantime certainly will have joined us, <laughs> enthusiastic tells us of the components, the electricity supply and the temperature coefficients mutually to compensate for each other. Yeah, and it goes on. And uh, it was an excellent review and they refer to the motor as an electro marvel mechanical engineering and uh, and his last paragraph was uh, however at the line of but, but in, in some uh, 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 comparing various records bought relief it was just the background noise of the cutting machines which had scared me as clearly as on the 501 i've never heard it before yeah so can't get more of a ringing endorsement than that no 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 no, no. so that's that. Hmm. So, uh, 
I suppose everybody, I better go home. Yeah. Because I'm not in here tomorrow. And uh, what were we going to talk about? We were talking about. Um, yeah, one thing we did we did pass on the subject is that yeah, very often with the trademark and the license, I I'm always in complete um, uh, contact with Gradiente IGB in Brazil. I mentioned the managing director who helped me initially, and uh, yeah, we're often discussing trademark infringements and that sort of thing, um, and. Uh, I was only on the phone to him the other day, but uh, that's another story. Story for another day. Yeah. Well, I think that concludes it. There's a thumb up. Thanks very much. Bye.